Hey Steve here and in this layer masking tutorial I'm showing you seven quick tips and tricks to make your work with layer masks in Photoshop quicker and more efficient. So if you like these quick layer masking tips then hit that thumbs up button and like this video to let me know so that I can keep making more just like it. And remember to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials and click that little bell notification icon as well so that YouTube will notify you every time I publish a new video. Now the reason for making this video is that Photoshop's such a massive program and it's often the case that we you know, once we find our own way of doing something that's just how we kind of do it forever uh, but this often means that we miss out on some of the little shortcuts and quick techniques that would make our lives easier simply because we didn't know about them now you probably do already know about one or more of these tips we start off quite basic in the first couple but there's a good chance you're not using all of them regularly so to help remedy that let's crack on with tip number one now like i said tip number one is quite a basic one but the reason i know that there are people out there asking about it is because the question came up when I was typing into Google uh, for something and the auto suggestion thing came up and the question, how do I invert a layer mask uh, appeared as one of the auto suggestions. And that only happens if people are out there Googling the answer or Googling the question to find the answer. So I'll just show you tip number one is quickly, I'm gonna show you how to invert a layer mask. So we'll add a curves adjustment to this example image and I'll just make a change here uh, just a random brightening now the layer mask is white so that adjustment is fully um, fully visible fully revealed now we can quickly invert that layer mask to turn the layer mask black simply by first clicking on it and then on the keyboard on a mac you would hold command or on a pc that's control so command or control and then i and that inverts it to black and you can flip back and forth just keep inverting it command or control i every time and let me just show you what that looks like if i have well i've got a black brush selected let's just brush this adjustment out of the foreground just really roughly so that you can see the example so i've hidden or masked out this adjustment from the foreground and now if i invert the mask we should see well, let me just show you what it looks like if I disable and re-enable this layer first. So only the top half of the image has taken on that curves adjustment. And now if I invert the mask, Command or Control I, we'll see if you just pay attention down here in the layers panel, you'll see as the mask inverts, the opposite thing happens in the actual image. So it's essentially inverting the effect of this adjustment. There we go. Uh, that's tip number one. So let's move on to tip number two. I'll just delete this adjustment here. And for this, I just need to start with a layer that doesn't have a layer mask attached already. So any layer will do for this example. So the second tip that I have for you is that when you add a layer mask, so let's just run through that. I'll click on my background copy layer and I'll click the add layer mask icon to add a layer mask. When you do that, it always comes with a white layer mask. Now, if you wanted to actually uh, add a layer mask that starts out black, then the quick way to do that is on the keyboard, hold the Alt or Option key. And there we go. So that was a really quick and simple tip. Um, it's kind of the same. You know, I spent years just adding a white layer mask and then quickly inverting it with Command I. Um, and yeah, it's just one of those things. It's a real simple thing, but yeah, I spent so long just purely out of habit taking the long way around uh, so hopefully if uh, if you're not using this then you can just save yourself maybe a second or two every photo you process uh, okay so that moves us on to tip number three so for this i'll just delete this background layer copy and i'll add a couple of random adjustments i didn't mean to click that let's add a curves adjustment here which brightens the image let's add a curves adjustment that increases contrast Okay, so going back to the brightening layer, let's just put some random stuff in the layer mask again. So I'm just gonna mask out the foreground so that that's not brightened. And yeah, so tip number three is about copying and pasting a layer mask. So, you know, in a scenario where you've spent a lot longer creating the perfect layer mask, a lot longer than I did here anyway. Um, and then, you know, that layer mask you are gonna to wanna to create that same kind of accuracy on another layer. 
then you know you're not going to want to like recreate that and go through all the long hard steps of creating that perfect selection and perfect layer mask so what you can do is actually copy and paste from one layer to another now i showed um, this in a previous video recently but i'll just add it in here again because it is quite valuable uh, so the way that you can copy and paste from one layer mask into another is if you hold on the keyboard alt or option then that loads the layer mask into view and then you can basically copy and paste from here so command or control a to select all and that selects the canvas command or control c to copy and then click into the layer mask that you want to paste into and then command or control v to paste and there we go so we've got that same layer mask being applied in two different uh well in two masks so that was tip number three now Tip number four actually follows on from that and gives you a quicker way of actually doing that same thing. Now there are times in your workflow where it's going to be more convenient to copy and paste like how I just showed you. But in another scenario, let me just recreate this curves adjustment here. So let's add a curve, curves, a contrast curve there. All right now the, the super quick way to actually copy and paste from one layer mask into another is on the keyboard so this is tip number four um, on the keyboard hold alt or option and then click and drag the mask you want to copy from and drop it onto the mask you want to copy to and now we're going to get this little pop-up that says replace layer mask yes or no we'll say yes so technically not copying and pasting but still the same thing it's basically replacing one layer mask with another so tip number five now this is going to probably come into play more if you're using luminosity masks um, but i'll just run through the example here um, just with these masks i've created already but if you're using luminosity masks then um, yeah hopefully you'll be able to see that this is quite a valuable tip and um, yeah it's going to be quite useful in your workflow now tip number five is that you can load a layer mask as a selection so we do that simply by clicking on the keyboard or holding on the keyboard command or control and clicking on the layer mask and we can see that that's loaded a selection that represents that, uh, that represents that mask and so there's a few different things that you can do with that one we can then with that selection active we can actually just add another adjustment and because that selection is active it's going to load that straight into the layer mask of the adjustment i just added and another thing let me just restart that so another thing that you can do if like i say this is going to be really useful if you've spent a lot of time um, creating the perfect mask you can actually save a copy of it in the channels panel so command or control click to load it as a selection come over into the channels panel and then just hit the save selection as channel button and now that creates a layer, uh, an alpha channel, alpha one in this case, uh, that you can always come back to and reload that as a new selection. So it doesn't matter what happens over here. If you end up deleting the uh, the source adjustment that had that layer mask on it, nothing that you do over in your layers panel is going to make this alpha channel disappear. So you can always come back and load it as a selection. So command or control click to load as a selection. And you can come back into your layers panel and add another adjustment just like I showed you a second ago and uh, yeah that is a really useful thing to do so I just realized I got a little bit ahead of myself there and skipped ahead to tip number six uh, without actually mentioning the transitions so tip number six was actually that you can save that active selection directly to a layer mask uh, or load it directly into a layer mask so you know once you've got that active selection uh, as seen by the marching ants here in the main window then you can add it to a curves adjustment like so and it's going to load that selection as a uh, as the layer mask or let's say we've got another copy of the background um, and we load the selection up here from the mask it works the same way if you've got a layer that you want to add a new layer mask to so anytime you're creating a layer mask either on a pixel based layer or as part of adding an adjustment layer the selection that you've just loaded is going to automatically 
uh, be loaded into the layer mask. So for the final tip, let me just delete these layers first. And now I'll just add another miscellaneous curves adjustment. So let's add some contrast this time. Okay, so tip number seven is, well, it's gonna be more useful when you're using luminosity masks. So this is a good kind of advanced tip really. And what it refers to is if you've got a luminosity mask, so let me just create a quick channel. So let's make a, or a command click or control click on RGB. Save that as a selection. Oh, sorry, save that selection as a channel. So this is a channel here now, alpha two. Um, so one thing that you can do with luminosity masks, which this is actually the same thing that I just showed you in the previous tip, but it just uh, just using a more complicated mask. We can load an alpha channel by hitting command or control on the keyboard and clicking on that alpha channel. And then when we come back over into the layers panel, we can add an adjustment layer, for example, a curves adjustment. And that is going to appear with that selection, i.e. Uh, the selection that's built from the alpha channel is going to come with that loaded as the uh, as the layer mask. Now that becomes a little bit more awkward when you want to do the same thing, but on an adjustment that you've already created and it's already got a layer mask. So one thing that you could do is either delete the layer mask, activate or load the channel as a selection, and then come back over into layers and then add a layer mask again that way. But let me just uh, undo that. But my preferred way of doing that, rather than clicking and dragging, that's a couple of extra steps involved. Uh, the quick way is to actually come into the channels panel, load the alpha channel, back over into layers, click on the layer mask, and then hit command or control I to invert the layer mask. And now we just have to deselect command or control D and now invert the mask again with command or control I. And that essentially does the same thing. Now it's a couple of steps, but I just find that the keyboard shortcuts are actually quicker to do than, you know, than clicking and dragging and getting rid of that. And then, you know, going that whole route. Um, but yeah, that is how I like to do it. If I need to add a loaded selection immediately or directly into uh, an existing layer mask. So that covers the seven tips that I wanted to share with you today. Hopefully you found a handful of them useful. And that just leaves me to say thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.